and and also too from remembering from our first uh, interview that we had from from my understanding um you know you, James actually went to bat for you right to to keep you on the show and if i remember correctly uh, initially you were auditioning for uh, a different role it was the the Ralphie role right and then it ended up becoming the Eugene role but it was because of that chemistry that you guys had during that initial audition right that got you on the show well James I was working at Caroline's and James found out through my friend Gordon at a party. He went up to him and he said, I, I might have said this in the last podcast, but why not? We'll repeat it again. If I was you, I'd get your friend Bobby Fanaro a job on your show because it was like season three. Se at the end of season three, it was starting season three. So uh, James said, well, what's Bobby doing? Because, you know, we did Streetcar Named Desire in Europe prior, about seven, eight years prior to that. Uh, we toured uh, Scandinavia. And we kept in touch, but not, he went to LA. I stayed in New York, managed Caroline's, lived my life a little bit, acting here and there, but not really as he was doing, true romance and stuff like that. Anyway, so he found out through Gordon. And then uh, he took his driver, Joe Fay, around because he couldn't remember what comedy club. And he wound up in Caroline's and I walked into work that day and he was at the bar and I said, what are you doing? We picked up where we left off. And he said, to cut to the chase, I have an audition if you'd like it. Have you been acting? Of course, I lied. I said, yes. <laughs> and I uh, hadn't been acting a lot. Uh, and that's my first professional job. I got my apprenticeship in and film because it was shot like film on The Sopranos. So um, he said, oh, I can offer you this audition for this character, Ralph Sofredo. You see George Ann Walken. I studied it. I landed the role, Zaya. I landed the role. But the chemistry between us when we were filming, uh, was a bit off with two big guys. Uh, there wasn't that, you know, that um, that differential uh, of uh, with two nice guys. I, I was I, I was told with two nice guys, <laughs> and uh, I wasn't that nemesis to him. So David tried it again, but it just wasn't working. But he wanted to keep me on the show, and he said, "We'll create a character." Now I think. Uh, James had a little bit of something to do with that, you know, keep Bobby on the show. And 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 so I didn't just, wasn't a one hit wonder and everything. And they created Eugene. And I asked David, what is Eugene? He said, look, don't worry about it. I saw Terry Winter, who, who was a great writer who won an Emmy Award for Members Only, the episode that I, that I the one that you watched uh, for Best Dramatic Episode. Um, he said, "Don't worry, Bobby. We'll 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 make it up as we go along. As I get to know you, which is a lot what a lot of writers in television do and film too, but more in television because you get to know the people." So I became a crew member, and then one thing led to another, and here I am talking to you. So that's how it really transpired. And if you look at the first episodes of of season three, you'll see me in the front credits, Robert Fanaro in the front credits. So. That's because contractually I had to be in the front credits, but it didn't matter to me. I was on the greatest show on TV ever. So I was happy. You know? Yeah. And, and you got made, you know, very early on as well. And yeah, and with Michael. That, right. Yeah. I mean, and also too, you know, with, if you look at the villains that were, if you call them villains, right. That were in the um, Sopranos crew that Tony ended up going up against, right. You know, with Richie and Ralphie and, you know, he even ended up, you know, killing his cousin. Also, everyone also was a lot smaller than Tony, right? So yeah. I mean, Joe Pantaleone, I believe was a, an initial candidate for the, for the role of Ralph, but I think negotiable, it was something in negotiations that fell through. But when I was, you know, when they made the change, of course, they made another phone call and uh, Joe was perfect for the role. He was the great, you know, Joe has got that, that, how should I say, bull breaker kind of, you know, he can really play any place, many other roles besides that. But, you know, Joe can really get under your skin. So yeah. um, me a little bit less. I got to try a little harder, you know. Yeah. So, but um, yes, that was true. D David Preval, uh, who was, and of course, the others who played, um, you know, opposed uh, James. Yeah. And, and again, right. And they, they made it up their strength and stature and their personality. Right. And I, I think if, if you had been cast, I think the character would have been different. The writers are so good at knowing and writing to the characters or the actor's strengths. 
right? And I, th I think I'm, I'm actually excited well, what the difference I was cast, is. but the thing is, I think James thought that because uh, Stanley, who I played Stanley, I was, you know, and he's a big antagonist when it comes to Blanche Dubois and Shrikar, uh, James remembered that antagonism I had, uh, and that's what stayed, in, besides me as a friend, but he, that stayed in his memory, and I was pretty... That was a great production that we did over there. But uh, he had thought that, well, that might work because of Bobby's, you know, streetcar thing and he can make the transition. But it didn't just, it just the chemistry wasn't there at the time. So it's one of those showbiz things. But it was yeah. a, you know, one in, in I, I forgot it was you two and listening. Um, you pull uh, the from defeat, you pull hope from defeat, victory from defeat. And that was my, my story. It was definitely sad to lose that but at the same time it was victory in the end you know